Hey, I'm Jamie O'Neill, and you're watching Strip Live. So tell me, when you were growing up and you wanted to get into music, what was that like? You know, I was so young when I started. My parents were singers, and my sister and I just wanted to emulate them. You know, we would watch them side of stage, and we thought, if we're going to be out here on the road, we want to have fun like they are up on stage. It just looks so, like so much fun. And so one of the first places I started singing was the Golden Nugget right here in Vegas. No way. Mm -hmm. So take me back to that. What was that like? It was pina coladas by 10 and slot machines by 12. <laughs> no, um, it was really fun, except for the fact that we couldn't be in the casinos because we were too young. So we would come in the back door, perform, and then have to head out the back door, you know. And really, Circus Circus was the only place we could go as kids. Well, what about now? Do you have like a ritual before you go up on stage? Is, is there something that you do to prepare to go up on stage? Well, I usually change out of my flip-flops and put on heels. Which I saw in your purse, by the way. Yes, I, have to get, I carry those flip-flops everywhere. Um, croc flip-flops, which are the most comfortable ones you'll ever wear. Um, but as far as the ritual goes, I mean, I do have some exercises. I do exercise about 40 minutes before I sing. Because normally I'm doing like a 90-minute show. Yeah. So you want to be warmed up because it's kind of hard to sing on your voice, you know, for that long and to do holding out notes and everything if you haven't warmed up. That would be a ritual for me. So when you're thinking about your music and, and creating um, music, what is that process? Is it, is it organic or is it deliberate? Um, what is that like for you? It's a little of both. I mean, I think it's deliberate when you make a writing appointment and you say, we're going to write, you know, on the 13th at 1030. Um, and you hopefully write for three to four hours until you finish the song. And I have a new album coming out that's going to be five new songs and then my reimagined hits, versions of my hits. So. Okay, that's exciting. Yeah. What was that like, um, creating this? It was great. I mean, like I was talking about before, the, the genre has changed in that we can do anything we want. And we, we can go as, as far as we want to because the lines are so blurred on what kind of music you can make. And, <coughs> excuse me, I still love steel guitar and fiddle and mandolin and, you know, those rootsy instruments that, that define country music back in the day. I still love putting those on tracks but kind of mixing them with loops and making it a little bit more pop sounding as well. And my final question for you, um, what is your success advice to anyone? I think never give up. And I think if you don't wake up with the passion for doing it every single day and wanting to get better at your craft, whether it's writing and like re-editing your music, re-editing your lyrics and making the songs as good as they can, because it all starts with the songs. Yeah. Um, then maybe you're not as dedicated to it as you need to be because it's not easy to make it. And so I feel like you have to be all in. You know, you can't have like one foot out the door, or, you know, just kind of take music as a hobby. I feel like you have to work at it every day, and especially in Nashville because it's so competitive. I mean, everybody there is there to make it, you know, with a guitar strapped on their back, walking up and down the <laughs> street, going to appointments and guitar lessons and things like that. And I think if you're going to, compete at that level you have to be ready to completely devote your time and and yourself to it you can't let other things get in the way well what an inspiration you are thank, thank you. you thank you for those words of wisdom thank you very much thanks for talking to me today